Folks, this is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer, reporting on Game 4 on the second day of the Hiroshima Open Chess Tournament in September 2019, held at Astaire Plaza. Here it is in all its glory, the Hiroshima Open Chess Tournament. That has just finished today. Reporting on game four, in which I was playing with the black pieces again, so it's my third game out of four playing with black, using my experimental, or I'm ex where I'm experimenting with the d6 opening. Throw d6 out no matter what white opens with. However, in the interim, between losing my first two games as black, I downloaded another book to uh, my Kindle. It's so easy to download these books. Uh, play 1d6 against everything. This looks like a, a, a rather easier to digest uh, version of the d6 repertoire, as it claims to be a compact and ready-to-use black repertoire for uh, club players. Uh, in other words, it may not have so much uh, in uh, in depth analysis as the uh, explosive uh, opening repertoire for black by our Finnish chess experts. These are a couple of German chess experts, and uh, it. I had a quick look at it uh, over lunch before this game. And I was looking at the what's called the end game variation. The end game variation is in both these books, but I had a quick look at it. And uh, I found I thought it was fairly easy to remember. So uh, I wandered back into the uh, chess venue, sat down and was presented with E4. And here is how things went. E4, D6, D4. Um, it's all looking good. This is this is uh, all in line for this particular end game variation. And. I was watching and I thought, oh, yes, please take this pawn, because if white takes the uh, e5 pawn, we are on for the end game variation. And sure enough, my opponent took it and I took back. And then I said, please take my queen. Let us exchange queens. And uh, white is very likely, as the, uh, the uh, play d6 against uh, everything book says at the club level, when white notices that in taking your queen, it will force the black king off his uh, e8 square, therefore uh, to, to take back the queen, like so, which means that black can no longer castle and appears to have a king stuck in the center. It doesn't just appear to have a king stuck in the center. The king is stuck in the center. And this, from white's point of view, seems like a very good thing. And the point that... Um, uh, the uh, d6 repertoire uh, advocates make is that actually we can get to a very solid defense for black from this position. And uh, let's play through and see what that situation is. Now, my opponent responded with the strong um, bishop to c4 move, attacking this vulnerable pawn down here. But there's a perfectly good answer, which I did. And we have this exchange. And now not only do we appear to have uh, a king stuck in the middle, but we now have double pawns. Is this not disastrous? Actually, no. If you know how to play this system properly, uh, we'll be coming to that in a moment, um, the double pawns actually become a defensive asset for black in this system. Uh, I responded... Oh, sorry, black responded with bishop to uh, bishop to g5, which is not in the repertoire books. But don't panic because um, we're going to respond with c6. Now, this is where things went wrong, because in my scatterbrained and brief perusal of these books, attempting to create a chess repertoire out of nowhere, um, just a couple of days before this this uh, this tournament began, um, I got rather confused with my opening systems for the d6, and I thought that what we did in this opening was throw out c6, and in a certain opening variation, c7 is a nice refuge square for the black king. And I was quite certain that that was the case for this variation, but it is not. 
Um, and before I show you the disaster that occurred in the next few minutes, let's have a look at what a better variation would be. Um, although this is not a book move, I'm leaving it and then responding uh, in a strong way. Now, <laughs> what's interesting to see Lightyear doing is recommending right now that I move my bishop out here to B, uh, B, B4 to pin that knight to the king. Now, I did make such a move, but I made it somewhat later. And it's not part of, at least, perhaps it would be part of the repertoire if, if our, our chess experts had seen, had anything to say about this move, but they don't. What they recommend instead, they assume that bishop will come to, D, uh, to e3, and in response, we play bishop to uh, d6. Um, I'm just leaving leaving the bishop down there on g5 and carrying on as if it's on as if it's on uh, e3. And this is how the repertoire moves play out. We move uh, our knight up. We move our king. This is where the king should go in this variation. Hop in behind those double pawns, adding extra defensive power to uh, these two squares, f6 and d6. Uh, there's quite often a queenside castle to get that rook down on this, uh, this uh, e, uh, d file. No worries. We have this little move and we have this. So the point about this opening, this uh, defense by black, is that the king builds up a solid center. The king sits behind a solid defensive uh, uh, fortress in the center while uh, opening up lines on one or other flank and the rooks tend to stay on the flanks or on on uh, on open files on the flanks the rooks don't tend to play this opening as is intended by our chess experts uh, we don't bring the rooks into the center and this is how things play out. So now we have the, the bishop uh, safely ensconced on, on uh, e3 up there. And we bring back the knight down here. So we have this massive central fortification with uh, some possible open lines on the flanks for black. Uh, we have no queens in the game. And white now has to work out how to break down this fortification. That is the theory. And here was my dismal practice. So my first mistake is that instead of putting my king into the safety of e7, I prepared um, a c6 for, I moved c6 to prepare c7 as a hole for my king. And what a hole it was. Uh, we now get there. So we have this open file and a queenside castle. It's pretty obvious. But I was unfazed at this stage. And you can see Lightchess does suggest the king hop up there. So we hopped up and we had these moves. So some of these moves are vaguely OK. So I so I I kind of remembered that I was meant to be moving my pawns forward on the flanks, and this looked like a good way of doing it. And now, if you notice, if we go back at this point, Lightchess is still recommending that bishop move, bishop to b4. However, by the time we get to here, Lightchess uh, prefers the actually standard repertoire move of bishop to d6, but. I saw, and this is where this is where I really need to clip myself around the ear because I have seen a very simple thing up here. This is about as far as my analysis seemed to go yesterday playing black. As, oh, look, there's something happening up there. And off I went. And you can see what Lightchess thinks of this massive no-no from Lightchess. Just because you think you're being clever and pinning the knight to the rook doesn't mean a thing when you look at the position. Because what do we have here? We have, I mean, it's such basic stuff. It's uh, really, I mean, why am I making these videos? Well, these videos are all about how to improve your chess from uh, being a pub chess bluffer to being something a bit better. Um, this pawn is so weakly defended. 
obviously the bishop should go here. It's so obvious. But I was lurching without any second thought. Yesterday, playing black, it seemed to me the first thought that that came to my adult pate, I simply acted on without any reflection at all. This is absurd. Absolutely absurd. This bish this pawn this pawn is simply underprotected. So we now bring on the disaster. We lurched. We we yeah, so I could see, oh dear, I have miss I haven't I can't say miscalculated because there wasn't any calculation at all. It was just a lurch. Um my hope was perhaps I could fool my opponent, who's an experienced club player for crying out loud, by by a pub chess bluffer kind of trick of hop up here, grab the pawn, turn off the lights, keep the lights dim so nobody will notice, uh, hop up there, and yes, it's game over. It is game over. Obviously, he's not going to fall for it. And this is how things play out. And the game was over before most of the other players had even finished uh, developing all their pieces. I felt rather embarrassed and, and uh, sorry that I hadn't given my opponent a better game for his money. He's come all the way down to Hiroshima to play this kind of rubbish. Ah, uh, so that was my most disastrous game. A simple, a simple act of forgetting over here, getting things tangled up and wrong, and then a lurching move. Things must improve. Okay, so that's all from me. A rather shamefaced pub chess bluffer uh, over and out after an utterly disastrous fourth game at the Hiroshima uh, Open Chess Tournament, uh, September 2019.